Stem Cell Research, a BioVid production for the BBC. Follow Glenn and George on a biological journey through the ethics and morals hidden behind stem cell research. Is it right? Is it wrong? Who does it help? And who does it hinder? BBC. It's your future and your right. <laughs> Taking an embryo, a small unborn child, which we all love. You take an embryo, you take some cells that have not yet been differentiated. You take these cells that haven't been differentiated and you force them to differentiate in the way you would prefer, therefore making themselves into organs. For example, testing diseases out on cultures. So, Paul, back over to you, mate. Okay, um, these stem cell tissues can uh, be used for transplantation, uh, for example, you can build a heart, or uh, uh, you say you can build uh, brain cells, and uh, this can be used to put in other people if they need them, or uh, perhaps they can be used uh, to create models for when uh, you have got a disease and you want to research this disease, then uh, you have create a model, uh, so you can look at it, and basically this will mean that uh, less animals will have to be tested and uh, uh, which is a, is a big moral and ethic uh, discussion going on at the moment. So, no animals, uh, so we, we use stem cells. Today, I'm going to talk to you about positives of stem cells. Did you know that stem cells can be used to create bone marrow, which is really useful for people who've got leukaemia? Well, that is a noble cause if ever I've heard one. A very good cause indeed, I'm sure you'll agree. Now, you think about where stem cells come from. Do you know? Do they come out of little boxes off Amazon? No, nice try. Unfortunately, they're from embryos. Oh, do, you, uh, do you know anywhere else they come from? You can actually get them from umbilical cords, and in some cases, adults, using a process called IPS. Umbilical cord, like them things that people use when they tie around their ankles and jump off buildings and stuff and bounce back up? No, not them. Oh, Boom. what are they called? Oh, they're bunges, I can't oh, remember. Oh, bungee cord, that <laughs> makes bungee sense. Cord, not umbilical cord. So umbilical cord, that's umbilical nice. Umbilical cord, they come out baby, they feed nutrients to baby. Oh, like a, little, baby grow. like a little nutrient motorway. A little, nutri a little nutrient motorway is a good description. Oh, okay. I'd agree. So anyway, George, they're used as a process called IPS. Do you know what IPS actually is? Oh, IPS. Yeah, I think uh, that's um, induced. Uh, pluripotent stem cells, is it not? I think you'll find that's actually correct, George. Well done. Oh, thanks. That's very nice of you to remember that. Yeah. And these can be derived from adult normal cells, which obviously helps less babies die. Well, do you know, that's a good thing too. That is a good thing, Because obviously. you don't want, because that is one of the more main ethics and it morals is. that we explore behind this stem cell research, is that people don't like babies being done, do they? No, they don't. Of course, I can see their point. You don't want an embryo being took out. Even if it has been aborted, you still would like to think they have some respect for human life. You would. But, uh, is, am I true in saying that the success rate for stem cells created from adults in your IPS system uh, is actually lower than success rate for them from embryos? Unfortunately, yes, that is true. However, think about the positives. You can, in fact, if you took your umbilical cord from baby, stored it away, Later on, in the future perhaps, you could grow your own baby's organs, so they'd never get ill. That would actually be amazing, because I've seen some advert on telly saying about people dying and saying that you wouldn't uh, say no to a transplant if you were ill, and all sweaty and that, but, um... <laughs> <laughs> but actually... All sweaty and that? I don't always get sweaty when I'm ill, you know. But, um, <laughs> well, no, it doesn't program, anyway. All right. So, yeah, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't say no to them. So, if you had your own little supply that you made when you had your umbilical cord, then that would be brilliant. So, I think we should definitely go, go ahead. So. Sure. However, there are some negatives to this. Do you know that? Okay. Hello. My name is Chimmy. I'm going to talk to you about the negatives behind stem cell. Okay. Most misconceptions revolving around the stem cell research are about its ethics. 
Most people say that it is wrong because when you extract stem cells from an embryo, it is destroyed. However, recently it has been shown in tests that you can manipulate a stem cell from an adult and that will be able to create embryonic like stem cells using a single cell biopsy pre implantation genetic diagnosis that may allow stem cell creation without embryonic destruction. So you get the same effect without killing the little babies. Okay, opponents to the research argue that embryonic stem cell technology is a slippery slope to reproductive cloning, which fundamentally devalues life. Those in the pro-life movement argue that a human embryo is a human and is thus entitled to the exact same protection that you will give to anybody else, a baby, an adult, a child, or anybody else. Okay, so that is the negative. Ah, how you doing? Today, we're gonna discuss morals. What do you think a moral is? A moral? Um, I think it is, um, um, oh, I know, is it a painting on the wall? No, that is a mural. Unlucky, that's a nice attempt. A moral will be a personal code that you live by. For example, a, mor a moral of mine is that murder is wrong. Whereas an ethic would be an application of morals into a social context. For example, if you've got a murder, then everybody is uh, entitled to a completely fair trial before they are proven to actually have done it. So, although you may think it's wrong, this man may have committed a manslaughter, but you think that because he's committed a murder, that he has got to die straight away, to be stoned, or whatever. But because it is manslaughter, and it's not completely his fault, that it means that he doesn't have to die, he can only go to jail for maybe 10 years, 20 years. So this is what you can have an example. Okay, we're going to, uh, basically we've got some stem cells here, just go to put them in. And then basically what you got to do is you just got to uh, wait a little while and, and they will, um, they will basically turn into your, your whatever you want, your liver, your heart or whatever, so. Oh no, uh, it's a cat, what the hell? Oh no, we've just, we've just spoiled this kitty cat. Hello, how are you doing? And then, and then it's been five days, it's like. What's five days? That's like a week of school. That's nothing. Like on Monday, I do something, and then Friday. Yeah, alright, George. It don't count, alright? Must. Okay. Stop again. <laughs> no, I'm not recording. Fucking okay, hell. A biovid production for the BBC. <laughs> what do you think a moral is? Um, is it, um, like, um, football? No. <laughs> Unlucky, that is a good attempt. <laughs> Carry on.